Welcome back to the football show. This is the moment where we need a bit of a partition between you, isn't it? We're going to talk about the 245th <laughs> time. Jeremy Kyle or something, you're rowing. Uh, <laughs> Liverpool 2, Everton nil in the derby. Uh, Stephen, it felt a little bit like a game where both teams come away with a bit of credit. Liverpool take the points, but Everton, with 10 men for so long, acquitted themselves pretty well. Yeah, and they made it difficult. They made it... Um a tough game for Liverpool in the way that they set up. I thought Sean Dyche's tactics in the second half were, were the right ones, if I'm being completely honest. I think he had to try and be sort of stubborn in, in the way that they played, and they were. They made it difficult. I think you could see the changes that Liverpool made in the second half, where he took off Costa Simicus and put Luis Diaz as effectively a left-back and Jota left-wing, and then had the two of them trying to overlap because they found it difficult to get, get at Everton and create too many opportunities. I think there was times where Liverpool's final ball wasn't quite at its best and they could have made more of opportunities, but on a the whole, they, they dominated possession and dominated the game. So it's one of the, the great football clichés. Well, the form book goes out the window in, the, in derby <laughs> games, but it doesn't in this one, does it? Everton's record, particularly since Jurgen Klopp arrived, is appalling, yeah. particularly at Anfield. It is, and you know, I, th I just feel like Everton are, are stuck in a, a cycle at the moment. Um, coming into the game, see, typical Evertonian, I thought they could actually have a chance here. You know, Jurgen Klopp doesn't. Totally like, kills you, soon, It isn't is, it? yeah. Jurgen Klopp doesn't like the twelve thirty kickoffs. Obviously, injuries to to key players, Andy Robertson just going out, and then you looked at lots of internationals flying all over. But then it's the third consecutive season where Everton have they've done well in parts. They've stuck to a game plan. Um, you think that they might get something out of it, and then just. I suppose those small margins mean that they don't, whether that's a, a player sent off, whether that's Liverpool could have had a player sent off. You know, those sort of small margins have, have gone against them. So, yeah, the record's awful and it's something that Everton certainly need to get, get out of. Well, Stephen, you mentioned that effectively Luis Diaz was playing at left-back when Costa Simicas went off in the second half. What about on the other side of the pitch, Trent Alexander-Arnold? Yeah, I think one of the big things about Trent Alexander-Arnold, what we're looking at here is this is the game against Everton last season at Anfield and when you look at his average position, it is predominantly down the sides and you look at that, that right-hand side and we know that what he's done this year or towards the back end of last season is he's moved into that inverted position, that hybrid fullback role. And when you think of... He almost plays as a winger when he played last season or he'd go and support Mohamed Salah. But as you look at the progression this season, you look at his average position, he's now drifting into these central areas to pick up the ball, to have an effect on the game, to make sure that he can hit those diagonal passes. Don't get me wrong, he still does like to stay on the touchline as, as much as he can. But given the opportunities to drift inside, to, to, to sort of dictate a game, dictate the, the way that they want to play, he is drifting into those positions. Um, it does leave Liverpool a little bit vulnerable in wide positions. But what you get from Trent Alexander-Arnold in these central positions is that he dominates the game. He gets on the ball and he dictates the, uh, the pace of the game and how Liverpool play. So, you want to pick up on that? Yeah, Stephen, is it key then that the left-back has to come round and maybe make a three? So, uh, Andy Robertson obviously would be more used to that. So, maybe Simicast might take a little bit of time to maybe get used to with Trent Alexander-Arnold going in there. Would somebody else have to come round and make the three, do you think? Yeah, I, I think the big thing is, is that if you think of Trent Alexander-Arnold's position in here, that was what I was saying, was that this area now will be vacated. So, you'd have Canati at the weekend here, Van Dyke, and then you'd have Simicus, whereas previous seasons you would have had Andrew Robertson probably right up in this position, high up the pitch. And that just gives you a nice balance in the way that they play because Trent Alexander-Arnold then would be on that, that right-hand side. But you've got to make sure that you've got a balance in the way that Liverpool play. I think what we saw, well, what we've seen this season from, from Andrew Robertson playing is, is that he's very much more reserved and he has to hold back. That also does have... a a detrimental effect on the way that Liverpool play on the left-hand side. So, for talking sake, you have Luis Diaz up on this side. Now, if you're a right full-back and a right midfielder, you can double up on him. You can make it so much harder for Luis Diaz then to go and attack. And what you'll find is Robertson or Costa Simicus coming from this position now are just supporting. They're not making as many overlaps. So, Liverpool have had to adjust that. However, when you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold now picking the ball up in these positions and you've got Luis Diaz, if you can hit him quickly in a 1v1 situation, 
that's where it's very dangerous and that's where it can change it. If it's slow and it's too slow coming across and then it becomes a 2v1 for Diaz, that's when it becomes difficult. So they are they are getting used to that system. It is very difficult for, for the likes of Diaz to get used to because he likes to drift in off the side as well. And then it's congested in this area and you don't have an overlapping player coming around the sides. Uh, just on where Liverpool are, Sue, so a, a point off the top of the table after nine games. And when you think they've already played Chelsea, Tottenham, Newcastle, Brighton, Villa, the fixtures that are coming up before they play Manchester City after the next international break... They could be in an excellent position yeah. by the time they go to the Etihad. Yeah, it's a real opportunity for them. And it, it could have been a difficult game against Everton. They made it that, that it wasn't. And they've showed a lot of character, I think, in games, real togetherness, going behind in games where they've had to, to come back from that. I know they can't keep doing that. That's a trait that they, they obviously need to, to get out of because that's only going to happen for so long. But it has showed a, a real character. I think the, the way that they've... We know that they've got so many goals within their side. You've got, what, five players in three positions. So they've got that opportunity to, to rotate and change. They've had to change the midfield and they've probably done that quicker than than most would have, have thought. I think Shabozla has been outstanding. You know, I know we've picked up different players, obviously Mo Salah scoring the two goals, but I just think he, he probably doesn't always get the headlines, but I just think he just goes about his business and is um, he's been quality flip. I don't know what you think. I think the other side of it with, with Shabozla is, is that he's brought goals to midfield. Yeah. And, and that's what's arguably been missing for the last couple of years, mm. but it's a different type of midfield. Whereas when you think of the... the the midfield that functioned so well, Juan Aldum, Henderson, Milner, yeah. Fabinho. More craft these days, isn't there? Yeah. It? yeah, but that was work rate, it was tenacity to win the ball higher up the pitch, let the forward three do their thing. But they created so many opportunities for them, whereas now Zobazla is creating his own things mm. and he's capable of that and he's just an unbelievable talent yeah. when you look at the way he plays. But also add into that now, and I think, I think he was arguably the game changer at the weekend, was Harvey Elliott. Yeah. matured massively over a short period of time. Whether that is competition from Zobersley to say, well, I'm not going to be starting every week. There's other players who've come in. McAllister's obviously come into the team as well. And he's now been overtaken by Curtis Jones. Now, think back to a year ago, Harvey Elliott had gone in front of Curtis Jones and we were all thinking, well, where's Curtis Jones at? Now, Curtis Jones has come back and improved immensely. So those two players have matured. And it was interesting when, when you think back to a couple of seasons ago, Jurgen Klopp basically pinned his hopes, not his hopes, but pinned a lot on these two young players and said, no, they're the future of the football club. We're starting to see that now as well.